Hi, this is George Crudo. I teach a course called, called Food Photography en Natural for the Brian Peterson School of Photography. Uh, today we're going to be doing some critiques. We have about five images to critique here. Um, all pretty good images, actually. Um, I enjoyed looking at all of them. All right, so let's get started. The first one here is by Katharina Hilgers, and it's called Misty Sitsi Kama. And Katharina tells us this was a long exposure on Storms River Mouth in Sitsikama National Park, Eastern Cape, South Africa. She shot this with a Nikon D750, a Nikkor 20mm f1.8, uh, 60 second exposure, aperture f16, and an ISO of 100. And she said she wanted to achieve the creamy effect of a long exposure on cra crashing waves. The image was originally planned as a black and white version conversion because the weather was quite dull but after processing both versions I preferred the color one because of the reddish rock in the foreground. I finally added some color in the sky by curves adjustments different per channel. All right let's open it up in Photoshop and take a look at it. Um, beautiful image. First it has a lot of impact when you first look at it. Um, I like the composition of it. The composition you have some leading lines coming in from the corner here. Um, I think it was a good choice um, choosing color over black and white on this image because there's some really nice colors going on in here. Also some more subtle, almost pastel colors up here in the sky that she brought out. A um, little bit of green here in the mountains, very nicely done. Um, I love the way the, um, the long exposure gives you that misty look across the rocks here. Um, very nice. Um, first thing that uh, caught my attention here was I was looking at the histogram and I'm seeing some clipping here in the darks area. If you look at your histogram, always look at your histogram to see if you have any clipping on either end. And here we're, we're losing detail right here in the darks image, in the darks of the um, image. Now one way to tell where the clipping is occurring is if you open the image up in camera raw and you hold down the alt key and click on the black slider you can see those those dark areas in there is where it's clipping now you could try opening the raw file and trying to open up the shadows a little bit although i don't think it's going to work with this file because this is a jpeg and there's not enough information here and you see it's not really working here but uh, give it a shot with the raw file the original raw file try to open that up a little bit and see if you can get rid of some of that um, clipping and maybe bring out some more detail. So that was the first thing that caught my eye. The second thing was, since it was shot with a wide-angle lens, fairly wide, um, you can see some bowing here, some lens distortion here on the horizon. Um, quick fix while we have it in Photoshop here would be to duplicate this layer. And then I would go up to Filter, uh, Lens Correction, and then click on the custom slider. Remove distortion and just bring this down or bring the slider up which brings the horizon down and it makes it look a little more level. Now as it's doing that it's pulling in from the sides so you have this empty space on the sides and to fix that we just scale it and just bring it up and there you have it. Now we bring it back into Photoshop and now you can see the difference between the two. So it just kind of makes it look a little more natural. Um, but this was a beautiful image. I really enjoyed looking at this one. This is very well done. Nice job, Katharina. All right. Let's go to our next image. Next image is Freedom by Abdus S. Alim. And Abdus says that this is a shot of a blue-tailed bee-eater. It was shot at F9, 1 2,500th of a second, ISO 1250 spot metering with a Nikkor AFS Nikkor 800mm lens and a Nikon D4 camera. So now as we open it up in Photoshop, beautiful colors. That was the first thing that, that really caught my eye with this one. The colors... Um, at that shutter speed, you really captured um, it in motion. You stopped its motion perfectly. I mean, it looks it looks terrific. The eye is is clear, which is really what you want in wildlife photography. 
there's a lot of nice detail in here in the um, feathers and the um, up here in the wings and everything. Um, I love the way you, you separated it from the background. Um, a lot of uh, times it's difficult to do with in, in wildlife because you have to shoot fast and you don't have a lot of time to really do this. So um, they're just flying by you pretty quickly and you have to work fast. And this, this is well done. The only thing that I might have done was this, this little flower, this plant kind of growing up right through his, his wing here. Um, I would have cloned that out somehow. Um, one quick way of doing it would be to just select around the wing area. And I'm going to do this pretty quickly. So now you're going to right click and make selection and then do control shift I and choose the inverse of that. So now that we have the inverse, we can create another layer. Okay. And then we're going to grab the clone tool down the brush to the size that's workable. Um, may want to drop the flow down to about maybe 70%. Click a spot to clone to and yeah just like that. And then deselect, control D, and that's it. So now you get rid of that, and um, that's it. It's a beautiful image. Nice job. All right, next image. African Safari Tracker by Jim Ward. And Jim writes, Winneth is a Zulu tracker at a South African game park. His camera was a Canon 450D with a Tamron 18 to 270 lens, shot at 270 millimeter ISO 400, 1 80th of a second, aperture 6.3, manual settings handheld. All right. Now, let me tell you, if I was going to Africa and I needed a tracker, this looks like the guy I would want to be my tracker. I mean, you captured this guy's spirit you captured his determination um this this is almost an editorial style image where i'm looking at this and i'm wondering what he's looking at what does he see he looks he looks so determined he looks so uh, focused on on whatever he's looking at um the, it looks like there was a filter applied to this which which brought out a lot of detail in his face which i think really works with the with this image because he's he appears to be such a strong man, and, and the, 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 the um, detail that's brought out just, just exemplifies that. The only thing that, that kind of bothered me a little bit was sometimes when you use these filters, the backgrounds get a little bit um, noisy, or they look noisy. I know it's just part of the filter, but I would try to kind of just either soften that up a little bit, blur it out. Um, you can do that by making a duplicate copy, Gra grab the um, quick select tool, and just go around the edges of the man, and just do a quick selection. And I'm just going to do this really quick here. And make sure you have everything selected that you want selected couple of spots here, a couple of spots in his neck, his collar, and here in his jacket. And you can do a uh, refine edge on this, and you can smooth this out a little bit, and maybe feather it a little bit if you want. 
Get a little contrast. And then click OK. And now you want to do Control Shift I because you want to select everything other than the gentleman himself. And we can do Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And that'll soften it up a little bit. And you can adjust it here with the slider with the radius. And now, if you see that there's some spots here, like here that we missed, you can just go in here, deselect, Control-D, put a mask around this, grab a black brush, and just go in here and just kind of brush that out. And that cleans it right up. And you can see if there's any other spots. And just go around and look. See here in this chin, there's a little bit here. All right. And that's it. And I think that soft softness of the background against the harshness of his, his face, I think it adds a, a little bit more to the image this way. It kind of separates him a little more from the background as well. But this is a great capture. I really like the great contrast, great um the composition is, is done very well. Um the the histogram looks fine. There's there's no clipping I don't see on the whites here or the or the or the blacks. It's very well done. Nice job. All right, next one. This one is called Worship by Susan Flickinger. Susan writes, I shot this image while in Ethiopia during the Christmas season. The underground church was filled with pilgrims who had come from great distances to worship. I shot this handheld with a high ISO and an open aperture. I hope to convey the complete devotion and harmony of the couple while disturbing the sanctity of the setting as little as possible. And we'll open it in Photoshop. And this was also, this I thought was a, a, a wonderful image. It captured a, a really um, kind of solemn moment here with, with, with the candlelight and this, this person reading the um, this holy book, I presume. And um, I like the warm, warmth of the image. I, I like it really um, is perfect for this, this uh, s scenario here. Um, not much I would do to change this image. The only thing I could suggest is maybe um, create a layer. And we're going to fill this with 50% um, gray. And we're going to make an overlay. Okay, and what we're doing here is we're going we're gonna to just dodge this a little bit. So grab the dodge tool. Make sure it's your highlights are selected and bring your exposure down to uh, about depends maybe 15 percent okay and then just lightly brush in some of these lighter areas and what this is going to do is this is going to bring out the highlights a little bit more so it's just going to make these little s sections pop a little bit more like his face you want to bring out his face a little bit more and side of this hood and then up in here and then this person's face here Let's bring a little more light in there and then around here and the more you do this the lighter it's going to get just you can keep doing more and more runs but don't overdo it And you can see the difference. So it just, just makes it pop a little bit more. It gives a little more impact. Um, this, was a, this was a great image. I really, really enjoyed watching this. Is, I, I know it's done at a, a very high ISO, so it's, it's got a little bit of a soft look to it, which is, is fine. It just I think it conveys the message very well, even with that softness. I mean, if, if it was a hard-looking image like the previous one, I don't think it would work as well, but I think this one worked very well. Nice job. All right, moving on. Okay, we're going to move on to our last image here. And this one is called Apple Wine Still Life by Tom Lamb. And Tom writes, this was shot using black background paper, two strobes of softboxes, and one speed light. So let's open this up. Now, food photography is my specialty. This is what I like to do most. And um, so this one's right up my alley. Um, 
immediately the first thing I noticed was the lighting on this bottle is it's a very soft light which I, which is nice I, I like this a lot um, typically to get that you either need condensation on the bottle such as this or you would use a soft box and in front of the soft box you would use either some tracing paper or another scrim because typically um, even with just one soft box you're going to get a line like this it's going to be a more uh, defined line like this and not soft like this one so this this was this was probably a result of the condensation on the the out of this bottle the edge of this bottle um I like the fact that you can see these bubbles in in here so that that was well done to be able to bring that out and also that the um label is well lit because uh, sometimes when you're lighting from the sides like this it's hard to get that label lit properly uh, a lot of times it comes dark um, nice side lighting here for the apples, which brings out some details, some nice highlights in it. Um, one of the things I think that could um, help improve this image would be to, t to deal with this empty space here. <coughs> you know, it's still, still life. Um, we're, not, we're not pressured to shoot very quickly. So we have more time to play around with these type of things. It's not like, you know, trying to capture a bird in, in flight. So um, these type of things should should be dealt with, especially in still life like this. So maybe just moving the bottle over a few inches um, or just adding some more fruit there just, just to kind of fill this in because this, this is a little bit distracting. My eye just tends to keep going over to the spot again. Um, also, there's some discoloration, not discoloration, maybe some noise. Uh, the black paper sometimes does this. Um, there's a couple of ways you can deal with that. You can you can do like a, a little Gaussian blur in that section, um, but in this case, what what I would do is um, I would simply create a curves layer, and this is how I'm going to create a vignette. I would take a curves layer, bring the black slider all the way down, so we have total black, and then select the marquee tool. Now this is a small low res file, so I'm only going to feather this at 50. On a large raw file, you may have to go up as high as 250 to get this effect, because you don't want it. You don't want it to be square. You want it to be kind of rounded on the edges. So that's how I create my vignette, and then we are going to do fill this with black. Make sure your foreground color is selected. Blend mode is normal, and then deselect, and then you can play with the slider a little bit just to bring that up a little bit more. Another thing I like to do with, with food photography is I, I, like, I like to add a little bit of a blur, um, almost like, like a bokeh effect to it, because that brings your focus more towards the subject. Um, Photoshop has a great tool for this, and always duplicate the layers when you're doing this. So I would go up to duplicate that layer, go up to filter, blur, blur gallery, and go to iris blur. This is a great tool. I use this quite often in food photography. And kind of bring this around, drag this around to where you want it to be, where you what you want the viewer to focus on. So obviously it's going to be somewhere in here where you want it to focus. And you can kind of drag these out a little bit like this. And now there are two ways to adjust the intensity of this blur. One is by using this little circular thing here. Or you can do it up here with the slider. You don't want to do it too much. This is, like I said, this is a low res file, so um, I probably don't have to hit this as hard as I would with a larger file. So that looks about right to me. And then just click OK. And now that you have it as another layer, see, this is another advantage of having a second layer, is you can adjust the opacity to whatever you like. So you can kind of bring it up and down. And I kind of like it right around 65%. And now if you look in that area, that little problem area we had, it's not as not as bad. It looks a little smoother here in this black area. And if we look at the difference with it and without it, I think it just makes it look a lot more elegant and brings your eye right in here, right where you want it to, to look. And actually, even this, this area is not even as noticeable now that I did that. That's at least what I think.
So that's it. That's our last image. Uh, thanks to everyone that submitted these images. It's been a lot of fun. I enjoyed looking at these and uh, hope to see you again soon.